or try to mess with the box that they don't know what's in it. And they can get themselves hurt. And so you're unloading. Is it just, are you calm at that point in time? Or are you nervous? Or? I'm a little nervous just because you don't know how some kids are. Because, I mean, you have some kids that don't listen to rules and they're going to open a box, even though if you told them not to. And then he's going to get bit. So unloading is a little nervous and then having getting it set up because when you're setting it up, you can't pay attention to, like, if a kid sneaks up behind you or something and just opens a box. Because, I mean, by the time you notice that, he could already be bitten. Venomous are a great animal. They come in a lot of color mutations. They're pretty, but they are dangerous, and one simple mistake could be the end of it. So you need to think hard and long about if, if it's worth it. If you have a family or kids, do you really want to keep one where it could, your kids could possibly open the cage and get themselves bit, or if you get bit if you have time to get it in the cage or if you're going to, because some people will get bit and then let it loose. So it was a guy in Bentonville that did that. And then you just need to make sure it's the right timing for you, you have the right equipment, and it's the best thing that, I mean, it's the right timing for you to do it. Because if you have little kids, do you really want to take the chance of you getting bit and letting them grow up without a parent? What would be your advice uh is there a certain emotional state that you like to get in before you start dealing with these animals? Uh, I won't do it if I'm like upset or pissed off or on medications because that takes your focus off of it. And then, I mean, you want to have 100% focus on your animal and what you're doing with them. If you're mad or upset, I think you're going to be thinking about that when you're doing it. And you may accidentally put your hand too close to the head and get bit. Now, as far as uh, the difference between pit vipers and uh, what's the other species? Elapids. Yeah, elapids. Which ones are your favorite? Elapids. And I see you smile whenever you say that, so explain. Uh, I like, well, pit vipers have fangs that they can keep, like if they open the mouth, the fangs may not always be out, and then they can just pop them out. A lap bit, the fangs, they quite have things called fixed fangs. They're always out. I think cobras, in my opinion, are my favorite venomous. Uh, the intelligent snakes, they have that cool hood on them. So you got a bunch of different species. And they're just smart and they're just like the best ones to work with, in my opinion. What's different about, uh, which one is stronger or more aggressive? Uh, in my opinion, the cobra is more aggressive than the pit vipers that I have. I think just because it has a nastier attitude and the venom's a lot different. So it's going to screw you up a lot more. Do you ever feel like you're living with a loaded hand grenade? Yes, when you're uh, messing with these, it's like you have all that danger and like, I mean, they have the power to kill you, and every time you handle them, it's like, are you going to get killed? So it's, it's like tempting death, pretty much. I mean, if you mess up, you're getting bit. And then, so it's, more, it's like a grenade, because if it goes off, your ass is screwed. Uh, which would you rather have, uh, the, the setup of snakes here, or... Snakes. I hate spiders. Oh, well, when I was a little kid, I kept spiders too, and I had a little tiny snake in a five-gallon bucket. It was only like eight inches long, couldn't get out because I didn't get its cage set up yet. Had a bunch of spiders in a bucket too, didn't thinking they could climb. Woke up in the middle of the night and had a bunch in my bed. I g grew up in a out in the country and moved into a city limits. So spiders scare the crap out of me now. I, uh, I heard 
you said something about that in your mindset the other day when you were walking up to the truck and I thought that was hilarious. Everybody loves the snake show. Spiders. Oh yeah. I was like, yeah, we got to have snakes, but screw spiders. They can die. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. What do you, what do most people think about you? Uh, they think I'm crazy. I think for keeping them, but then, yeah, everybody comes to my house to see them and then start asking me questions about them. So I start answering them and show them that they aren't as bad as people think. But I get called crazy a lot. I think there's a bunch of people in this town that call me the snake man. And I'm known throughout this town, like everybody knows it. Cops, mayor, everybody. Do they look at that as a good thing or a bad thing? A lot of people don't like it because what happens if it does get out or the house burns down, I think. But like a lot of people understand that it's like it's what I like to do. Like the police department, the old school resource officer. I've always had a passion for it, and he believes in, that's my passion, and I know what I'm doing, and I've been doing it for a while, that I should be able to keep doing it. What do, what do your neighbors think around here? They're all scared of him, except for the one that's lives right over there. He, he's brought his daughter over and to look at him and stuff. He thinks they're cool. He's not really afraid of them, and he knows about exotics a little. I think, but everybody else is scared, but nobody has a problem with it. If one gets out, I'm just supposed to tell everybody. And what did, what does law enforcement, or is it game and fish, or? It's game and fish that deals with the animals, like wildlife and stuff, or exotics. And what, what are their thoughts on you having these? Well, I had my importation permit to bring them into the state. It's legal in the state, but you don't have to have a permit to Direct. Uh, the town and they have one, but they don't allow it there. And game fish specifically has to have it. Have they issued you any citations? Uh, I got issued one to renew an importation permit to keep my animal, but not for importing it. And all my animals came with them. So can you walk me through how, how that process works with the importing only? You can have what you can have, what you can't have, the amounts. Well, the law says that we can take up to six native species. That's all you can have. Like you're going to see you get a copperhead from Florida or California because different localities. And then you can still only have six. But I can have a thousand cobras. And, but if you want more and it's just the same as native fish spend more this morning, you have to have a wildlife breeding bill in hand, which gives you the right to breed them during the day. And are there a lot of people in the state that have those? No. A lot of the people in the state will buy off online or go to reptile shows and get animals. So it's not known. I mean, nobody hears that. I mean, 99% of the people in that town that go and buy animals probably don't know. So basically, they only they only come down on people whenever they find out. Okay, you've got X amount of things. They can, do they issue warnings or? Uh, warning citations. Uh, certain animals can be rearrested, like when there's deer or reptile, and if it's legal or can be. But game and fish, one they don't keep track of all this because everything else pretty much. They don't catch people that have been doing it for years, and then all of a sudden they show up. But I mean, the majority of the people that keep animals, they don't know that you have to have an importation permit or a breeding bill or permit. Can you explain to me a little bit about the Lacey Act? Or is that the Lacey Act that you were just... The Lacey Act is the ban of certain animals from going across state lines, like Burmese pythons, uh, African rock pythons, North and Southland. And yellow and the Congo dragon. Uh, you, you can own them, and in the state, like if you buy them within the state, you can keep them. Uh, you just can't take them across state lines. You can export them to the Europe trade, like across the country. You can do it for silver price, but you can't go outside your state lines. So what's in your state is in your state. It's kind of 
that the official has high phone call rights, they have to finally find out on this. Do you think that? Uh, do you think that that ad works? Hell no. I mean, it's not going to stop people. They they only made that because of the Florida problem. Well, Florida already took care of it. You just can't bring them into the state anymore, and if you have them, you have to quit. So, and people are going to own what they want to own. I mean, if you drive to a seven Oklahoma and you buy you go out on a condo and buy a bunch of steaks. All you have to do is go out and buy it off Craigslist. I mean, what evidence is there? There's probably a thousand people that get doing it right now. I mean, they say uh, taking guns off the street, making them illegal, will help control that. Or make drugs illegal. I mean, that's not helping. So doing the same thing to animals isn't going to help. I would imagine that this hobby, just like what you just said, has got to have a mixture of people that follow who are 